Hey everybody, it's Allie, the canine nutritionist from Padfoot Palms Poodles and Pals. We have an awesome question. So I felt like I should bring you in closer. Um, I also felt like um, I should do a video response because I hear this so often and it's just something that I would like to, to weigh in on. So Scott has a fantastic question. So Scott says, my wife took our six month old border collie to her first beginning home companion class this morning. And the instructor said, if you're still feeding three times a day, stop. If you're still feeding puppy food, stop. Now I'm gonna pause right there because there's a second part of his question. So um, I would say that if you haven't prepaid for this training, then stop going. <laughs> this is one of those areas where I really feel like professionals should stay in their lane, right? Like, I don't go around giving a, a ton of training advice, right? I, I tell people to go to a trainer because they're the professional. And while I have some experience training my own personal dogs, that's that's not the same as going to a trainer who could help with behavioral issues, who's gone through thousands of hours of certification, right? So this is kind of one of those areas where I feel like professionals should just stay in their own lane. Because I know, as a canine nutritionist, what this trainer is trying to say. But I guarantee you that no one in that class really understood what the trainer was saying. So I'm going to tell you what the trainer meant, but didn't actually say. So the trainer is saying that if you have a six month old puppy, to stop feeding them three times a day. Why is that? Well, that's because the majority of people in the United States feed garbage puppy food. I'm talking the Purina puppy chows, the, you know, Little Caesars, all of that. That's just packed full of sugar, problematic ingredients, and tons and tons of carbs. And where does all of that food end up? Well, your puppy is going to have to poop it out, right? So if you're feeding a low-end kibble and it's full of all of these problematic ingredients that your puppy's body is, you know, pretty much going to excrete, then your puppy is going to be pooping that much more. So what the trainer is saying is for a generalization, if you are one of those people who is feeding a low-end food and your puppy is pooping all the time because you're feeding them three times a day because that's what the bag told you to do, that's what the breeder told you to do, that's what everyone tells you to do, they're saying stop doing that. Because what happens is that pet parents get frustrated because their six-month-old puppies continue to have accidents, right? Or they get frustrated because their puppies are pooping so much these huge poops multiple times a day, right? Or on the flip side, they have a dog that maybe isn't a border collie, that isn't as active, and their puppy is becoming overweight, right? Due to all of the um, excess carbs and the higher fat content that puppy food has. So the, dog, the puppy may be becoming overweight. So what the trainer is doing here is making a lot of generalizations to cover a lot of different bases without actually explaining to people and educating them on what is a good quality puppy food, how long they should be feeding that puppy food, and how to evaluate their puppy to see if they're becoming overweight because it's something that you can do at home. I have a video that tells you how to do it. 
You don't have to take your puppy to the vet, although you could. And if at any time you need to weigh your dog, you can absolutely take them to your vet and say, hey, um, I'm concerned about my dog's weight. Can I please put them on your scale and weigh them really quickly? And I guarantee you that if you are being a proactive puppy parent, that they will absolutely either weigh the dog for you or allow you to step the dog on the scale. Why else would a trainer be saying, stop feeding your puppy three times a day and stop feeding them puppy food? Well, for trainers and for the sake of training, you want your dog to be a little bit hungry so that you can train them, right? And a lot of trainers recommend using their food, right, to have them work for their food in the training session. Well, if you're feeding them the maximum amount that you can for a day for a six-month-old border collie, and then you add additional calories on top of that, right, with multiple training sessions in a day, high value treats, your dog's gonna gain weight, right? Um, also, if your dog is not hungry, if they're not super treat motivated, then they may not be motivated to train. And essentially the trainer is saying, without actually saying it, that you want your dog to be a little bit hungry, right, so that they want the treats. That's, that's pretty standard. So, there's a lot going on here. Um, secondly, and probably the most disappointing reason, is that around six months is the time frame when vets start really pressuring puppy owners to spay and neuter. And this is beyond upsetting for those of us who have done the research and know that uh, how detrimental this is to the health of the dog long term. Um, but from a training perspective, it means that these dogs who have undergone a spay or a neuter are now, their metabolism is now functioning at a lower rate, a lower threshold. What does that mean? Well, it means they need fewer calories. Well, if you're feeding a puppy food, higher calories, higher fat, three times a day, maximum number you can feed in a day per the recommendations of the bag. And you're doing training treats on top of that. Do you see how that all adds up? So for trainers, it's like, okay, so you got your dog spayed. Now their metabolism is not burning as hot as it was. So now we got to cut back calories for that. And we want them to be hungry for training. And your puppy's getting fat because you're feeding a lower quality food. So all of these things all put together is why the trainer is saying that. What bothers me is that the trainer didn't say that. All of that that I just explained, the trainer said none of that. And most of them don't because while they understand why they're making that recommendation, they're not really educating anyone on nutrition, right? Which is what I do. So they're making these generalizations and in the case of our Padfoot Palms member here, Scott, it doesn't apply to him. So they've made these sweeping statements, these overgeneralizations that don't apply to him. And so now he's smart and he's coming here and asking for guidance. So I would say, Scott, if your Border Collie puppy is not overweight, is very active, has not been spayed or neutered, and has good body condition, then just keep doing what you're doing. If your Border Collie is uh, very food motivated, then maybe on days that you're going into your training class, you could cut back that third feeding. But what happens with this type of advice, and the reason why I really want you to focus on the fact that you know your dog better than this trainer could ever know the dog, right? This is your dog. So 
the problem that I have with this advice is that people will just blindly take it, right? Because they're going to a trainer, because they're a professional. And what ends up happening is their puppies are hungry, their puppies are burning calories left and right, right? They didn't get any help with any actual nutrition advice, so they're continuing to feed low-end food. Now it's just the puppy that's suffering. Well, do you know the number one problem of puppies who are hungry? Just, just think about it for just a second. If you were a puppy and you were hungry, what would you do? Well, by golly, I would jump up on the bed and chew this remote. I would go over to the wall and find something to chew on. Oh, look, a cord. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, there, there is a cause and effect for things. Now, I'm not saying that's the, your puppy's hungry, that's why they're chewing. Puppies chew things. But what I'm saying is that you can make a problem where there wasn't one by just blindly taking advice like this. So let's look at the second part of the question. I've been feeding her freeze-dried raw in the morning. Good job, Scott. And night and about a cup of Farmina puppy for lunch. That's the Farmina Ancient Grains. That's the one that's on my recommendation list in the group, um, in the announcement section, in case you're wondering where he pulled that from. She's always ravenous, like I said, border collie puppy, but certainly not wasting away. Okay, good, so he knows her body condition. I thought puppy food was supposed to be fed longer than six months. What do you suggest? So I'm so glad that Scott posted this question. And I feel like this is one of those areas where people get conflicting information from the feeding guidelines on the back of the bag, on, uh, you know, from their breeder, from their trainer, from their veterinarian, right? It's all over the place. So this is what I recommend, both for Scott and for anybody watching. Make sure you're feeding a quality food. Scott's already got that on lockdown. He's, he's doing fantastic. Make sure that your dog, or your puppy in this case, has quality treats, bones, chews. Make sure that you are aware of how to gauge their body conditioning. And again, I have a video about this. Um, I also have some videos to help you if your dog is very active and very lean, how you can boost calories in a healthy type of way. Um, and take advice with a grain of salt, right? There may be some people who have um, a very small, stout little pug that watch this video and they go, I've got to get my pug off of puppy food. He's, you know, seven months old. I got to get him off puppy food because he's getting chunky. But I'm feeding him really high quality raw puppy food. He's still getting chunky. That's okay. This, this is what I mean by you know your dog, right? Scott knows his dog. He knows... I can tell from the post that something is not right with what this trainer said. And that's because, like I said, they're making this generalization that doesn't apply to everyone. So should puppies stop eating puppy food at six months old? No. Should puppies stop eating garbage, low quality food? Yes, absolutely they should. But again, that didn't apply to Scott. And if this trainer had taken the time to really go over the nutrition part of it, then they would have seen, okay, well, Scott's actually doing really good. His dog looks good. He's doing good. So yeah, maybe this advice doesn't apply to him. But maybe this chunky monkey little, um, you know, Dotson over here, who's overweight and toddling around, maybe that advice would be better suited for them. So it, it just depends. It depends on the dog. It depends on the people. It depends on what you're feeding. So should a puppy be off puppy food by six months? No. There's no rule that says that. 
absolutely not. So Scott, I hope you're watching. Um, I would continue doing what you're doing. If you're not having a problem with house training, if you're not having a problem with your dog becoming overweight, you certainly don't have a problem with the quality of the food that you're feeding. I would say in this specific instance, ignore your trainer because it doesn't apply to you. Maybe it applies to other people in the group. Maybe the trainer, maybe there is an overweight puppy in the group and the trainer was just making this blanket statement to really address that one dog owner without having to call them out on the carpet and say, hey, yo, you better take better care of your puppy because your puppy's a fatty, right? Maybe that was the point of them making this, you know, overgeneralization. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I can say that without a doubt, this advice does not apply to you, so feel free to ignore it. Okay, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, and if you haven't joined my Facebook group, we would love to have you over there because we get awesome, awesome questions like this all the time. And whenever I have an opportunity, I like to make these video responses to help people out. Scott, you're doing a great job. I'm glad you're taking your puppy to training. Tell your wife, thumbs up. You guys are doing good. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. Okay. I hope you guys have a great night or morning or afternoon, depending on when you're watching. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Banana! Dun, 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 dun.